Now, more analysis of the president's decision to fire the director of the agency in charge of protecting U.S. elections from hackers. Chris Krebs reportedly found out he was being terminated for his support of the election process through a tweet by the president yesterday, who wrote the recent statement by Chris Krebs on the security of the 2020 election was, quote, highly inaccurate, says the president, in that there were massive improprieties and fraud. Krebs, along with several other state election officials you may remember, had recently declared the November 3rd election the most secure in American history. That's a quote. We should note that Krebs was not surprised at the announcement that he was being terminated. He had reportedly told those close to him that he knew he might lose his job for telling the truth. Jerry Holland, the former supervisor of elections here in Uval County, joins us this morning. Jerry, good morning. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Good morning. So as we know, the election review process is still ongoing. We were just telling our viewers just a few minutes ago that Georgia hasn't even certified its votes yet. It has another day of counting ahead of it. What kind of impact could Krebs firing have on the election review process in general? Well, I don't think it's much of an impact on the entire review. You know, what's important to understand is DHS, since early this year, has been focusing on cyber attacks, foreign intervention. You know, a lot of money went even into the state of Florida to make sure uh, anybody couldn't attack our voter registration system. So really, I'm not surprised at uh, his findings that there weren't any of those uh, particular attacks. So I think that's gonna be set aside uh, you know, what voters have got to really look at is what does it mean and how does it, you know, play into the entire process of, you know, considering there may be fraud other places. So, and, and, and let's talk a little bit about this because we've been hearing this now for the last week and a half, half these sort of allegations that have, have, there's been no proof has been submitted in these lawsuits that have been filed by the Trump campaign. This week, though, we have seen two Georgia counties where 2,700 and, and, and then 2,500 votes, respectively, were not counted because they were not uploaded. Does that somehow bolster the president's claims of improprieties? Well, it definitely adds to those uh, out there thinking that there's a widespread conspiracy. It adds thought to that. But in reality, our elections are based by state and then down to counties and down to precincts. So when you really get to finding votes in a county, it doesn't in any way relate to a, a possible conspiracy that the entire state did the same thing. 99% uh, of the time, they're human error. Uh, it's, it's someone uh, not uploading a memory card, someone uh, setting aside a box in one particular area. But what we're trying to find in a sense of making the election accurate at the end of it is that the entire state has you know, accurately counted their votes. Finding some is not unusual, but again, to have a statewide conspiracy is very, very difficult to comprehend that that could happen. Yeah, and we should point out also, and we've heard from the elections officials in Georgia, as I just noted, and they said, look, this is why we have an audit. It's to find these kinds of human mistakes that were made, uh, you know, because that's the, that is part of the election review process. So one of the allegations the president has made is that votes for him were switched to Joe Biden. As a former supervisor of elections, is that possible? Well, it's very difficult. You know, there was, uh, years ago, there was some tests done in Tallahassee even to show that if you had access to a single machine, you could reprogram a single machine to do that. Here's the difficulty. If it's in an area with a high concentration of Democrats or Republicans and they've been switched, you're going to see that anomaly right away. And it's going to show up. Uh, not to mention the audits that you do, especially in Florida, post audits, where you actually physically count and randomly select uh, precincts to count. So all of this, if, if there was such a conspiracy, which would have to be uh, orchestrated by literally uh, you know, dozens of people and across counties, you know, would be found out as they did audits. So uh, almost impossible to say that anything like that could happen on a widespread basis. And I, I just don't see it as a reality in this election that that was anyway orchestrated. And if we go back to Georgia, of course, the other point here is, is that this was a situation where if that were the case, then all of the Republican candidates would have done well or all the Democratic candidates would have done well. And that's not the case uh, in Georgia because we've seen the Republican candidates actually did well, but it was the president who lost that state. So the long-term ramifications, Jerry, um, to uh, you know the elections here in this country, when you hear the president basically suggest without proof that the election system was rigged? 
Well, I would like to see at the end of this process, you know, we have a federal elections assistance commission, and I'd love to see a white paper done at the end of all the fraud that was investigated, what was found, what was true and what wasn't true. Because at the end of the day, if you, if you have this thought that your elections are not fair, it's actually going to do more to turn down people voting. People don't feel like, why should I vote if my vote's not going to be counted? So we need to add back that integrity uh, to the elections by really at the end of the process, making sure everything's investigated and the public knows exactly what has happened and where there have been problems and how they're going to correct those in the future. Jerry Holland, a former supervisor of elections here in Duval County, joining us this morning. Jerry, thank you for your time. And we should point out that 30 or 40 lawsuits have been filed by the Trump campaign and that most of them have been dismissed for failure to prove fraud.